Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the Cupertino themed widgets that come with the Flutter framework. Up until now we've really been just covering material design spec based widgets, but Flutter also has a large variety of Cupertino based widgets for iOS themed applications. To bring in the Cupertino themed widgets, we want to make an import at the top here, and the import will be flutter backslash cupertino.dart. Now you will notice that I will not be replacing the material app widget with something called Cupertino app because there is no such thing. And I also want to keep the basic scaffold in here as well. And we'll talk about why that is near the end of this tutorial. In this application, we've just got a stateless widget that builds out the material application root widget. And then we've got a stateful widget, which builds out our empty scaffold. The first widget that we're going to take a look at is called the Cupertino tab scaffold. This is for when you want to have a tab bar at the bottom of the screen. So this is very similar to what we looked at in the last tutorial with regards to a bottom navigation bar. However, this is all iOS themed. Inside of this Cupertino tab scaffold, you want to define the actual tab bar that will appear at the bottom. And you can achieve this by using a Cupertino tab bar widget. Inside of our Cupertino tab bar widget, I have two widgets both of which are bottom navigation bar item widgets. So these widgets are reused between the material bottom navigation bar and the Cupertino themed tab bar. The general format is the same. We have an icon and then we have a title for both of these. But you may also notice that instead of using material icons or just the normal icons object, we're using this Cupertino icons so that we can have Cupertino themed icons inside of our navigation bar. So here I've got Cupertino icon home and then I've got a Cupertino icons conversation bubble. To actually get the navigation between these two tab bars to work properly, we want to add a tab builder to our Cupertino tab scaffold widget. So down here we have our tab builder. This takes in our build context as well as the index for the amount of tabs that we have. So in this case we have an index length of 2 and it will be 0 and 1. To properly create the actual content area for both of our pages, we want to wrap them inside of a Cupertino tabbed view. This is another widget, and this widget has a lot of navigation features built directly into it. Things like the router, as well as the tabbing and stuff. And we can use its builder to actually build out the pages that we want to inflate when we click the tabs above. To start out here, I'm just going to have a switch statement on the index, and then for the default case, which is just any case in general, we're just going to build out a empty container. You can see that we've got an empty screen here, and at the bottom we've got our little tab bar. The two icons are very Cupertino style, and we can click between them and it will switch the blue color from one tab to the other and make the other tab gray. If we want to, we can manipulate the background color for the actual bar itself. So you put this inside of the Cupertino tab bar widget and you specify the background color. And here you can see that I'm using a Cupertino color so I'm using Cupertino colors, light background gray. But I also do not necessarily have to use the Cupertino color object. I can just put a normal colors object in here and it will work just as well, even though we can't see the text and the icons that well anymore. We can also change the active color, which is the color of the icon when it's highlighted. So you can see the home is now green. When I click on chat, it becomes green. And we can do the same for inactive colors. So if I wanted to make it black, I could do that. So we have green for active and then black for inactive, even though this looks a bit weird, to be honest. Let's now build out a new page. So I'm just going to call this Cupertino page example one, and it will be a stateless widget. 
To add it to our tab, all we have to do is append it into the switch statement. So we can say for case zero, which is our home tab, inflate this page, our stateless widget page. Otherwise, just inflate the container. And then of course we need a break statement so that we can break out of the switch statement. For this page, we're going to take a look at the Cupertino page scaffold widget. This is a widget that allows us to define a general page scaffold for a Cupertino themed page. For this particular page, we're going to create a page that will allow us to scroll up and down. So you have the choice to choose a static page or a page that scrolls up and down. And I want to show you guys what it would look like to have a scrolling page with the Cupertino theme. So inside of this Cupertino page scaffold, I'll define a custom scroll view. And then inside of the scroll view, we want to define the actual slivers inside of this scroll view. And the first sliver that we'll define is going to be our Cupertino sliver navigation bar. So this is a navigation bar specifically themed towards Cupertino, but in this case, it's made to scroll up and down the page. If I reload our application, we can now see the actual output of this page. So here's our custom scroll view and then we have our and then we have our Cupertino sliver navigation bar here at the top. And you can see I have this large title property specified with a text widget inside of it and this is what's creating the title for this widget. If we want to, we can also add a leading property. So I put a widget in here so we've just got this leading widget at the top and we can also add a middle widget and there's also a trailing widget. So you can see here I put middle in and I put text inside of it that says welcome home. Welcome home will sit at the top like this, whereas our larger text will sit down here on the lower left unless we center it manually. All right, so now let's build out this page a bit so that we actually have it scrolling up and down. I've added a sliver padding widget and inside of it I'm querying the media query object and then I'm calling a method on it to remove padding from the top left and right of the screen and because we need the actual padding object inside of this padding property I need to call dot padding on this. This will give us back an edge insets object which we can then pass into the padding field. Then inside of this sliver padding field, we'll create a sliver list and we can then set up the delegate for this sliver list as a sliver child builder delegate. And for this, we'll create a closure which takes in the build context and then the index. And we'll return a bunch of containers inside of this that also have material inside of them. And this sort of goes along with the infinite scroll view code that we've been using in the past few tutorials. So this is just a bunch of containers which will swap colors back and forth based on the index. So we'll have colors yellow for every even index and then colors blue for every odd index. And then we'll have the index sitting in the center of the actual widget itself. Now unlike our infinite scroll view, however, we're only going to have 20 of these boxes because I've specified down here in the child count that we only want 20. If we open up our application, you can now see that we still have our bar at the top, but now we can scroll up and down. If I scroll up, you'll see that home will disappear. And you'll also see that this widget at the top has a bit of opacity to it, which is pretty nice. Another thing to mention is if we remove this middle property, when we scroll up the bar and home disappears, it now appears in the middle property. So here as I scroll back down, you can see that middle property goes away and then it becomes this larger leading text. So this is a pretty cool feature and it makes things feel a little bit more like a native iOS themed application. 
All right, so now that we have our scrolling page set up, let's set up a second page for this application. This time we want to create a stateful widget, and I'm going to call this second page just Cupertino Page Example 2 rather than Page Example 1. And of course, because it's stateful, it will have a state class to go with it, which we'll just call Cupertino Page Example 2 State. Again, we can come back up to our switch statement and add this page. So for a case where the index is one, we return the Cupertino page example two, and then we break out of the switch statement. Inside of this new page, we're going to set up yet another Cupertino page scaffold widget. This time, we're going to specify the navigation bar by putting in a Cupertino navigation bar rather than a sliver navigation bar. And this has most of the same properties that we had in the other navigation bar. Also, the Cupertino page scaffold requires a child, and I'm just going to put a center in here for now. So now if we go from home to the chat page, you can see here at the top of the screen it says let's chat and we have this nice little off gray color bar here. As with our other navigation bar we can add a leading item as well as a trailing item and in both cases here I've put in two icons and of course you could make these into icon buttons or you could just add buttons or whatever you wanted to this bar. There is no large title property in this navigation bar, however. So typically when you want a title, you put it either in one of these three properties. All right, so now inside of this page, let's put in a column so that we can take a look at some of the other very specific Cupertino themed widgets. First, let's look at the basic Cupertino button. This is like any other button inside of Flutter. We have a child property, an unpressed property, and we can specify the color for the button itself. Here's what our button will look like. So it's a nice big button and it has a nice iOS feel to it. If you click on it, you can see rather than having an inkwell effect, it just kind of goes into a gray effect. And again, like we mentioned before, rather than putting a Cupertino themed color in, we can put in one of our other material colors. So I put in indigo here, and you can see it still works like a normal button would. If we make the on pressed property into a null property, it will make the button disabled, which will turn it gray, and it will make it so that we can't actually click on it. So this is the same as what you would get if you had like a raised button and you made it null or if you just had any other normal button and you made it null. Now if you do not have a color inside of the Cupertino button, what it will do is give you colored text with a white background. So here's what the button looks like and I can still click on it and what it does is it turns the colored text itself into a sort of gray. Now let's look at the Cupertino slider. We can create a global variable called underscore value and we'll set it equal to 50.0. And then down here we can define a Cupertino slider. We can put in the value with underscore value, which will be the default value. And then we can specify the maximum and minimum for this slider, which will be zero to 100. And then the onChanged function allows us to change the value based on the user's actions. So here's what the slider looks like. We've got a nice white knob and we can click and drag it around. As with all of the other Cupertino themed widgets, we can of course set up the active color. The active color being the color on the right. So as I drag this slider, we have this orange color now. And by default, it defaults to that active blue color that comes from the Cupertino colors pack. If we look at the Cupertino colors object, there are only about seven of these. We have an active blue, an active green, a black, a destructive red, inactive gray, light background gray, and then a white. 
And the way that Flutter gets away with this is by filling in with the other colors that exist inside of the framework. So if we wanted something else that isn't in here, we could specify it directly either with a hexadecimal or by using one of the predefined colors in the material library. We can also create a Cupertino themed switch. So again at the top I'll create a global variable, we'll call it switch value, and I'll set it equal to false. And then down here I'll create our Cupertino switch, and I'll specify the value so by default it will be false. And then when the user clicks on it, it will change that false value into the state value which will be true and then false and so on and so forth. So down here you can see here is now our switch. It's this nice white themed switch. And when we click on it, it has an active color. And in this case it defaults to a green color. So in this case this is turned on and then when we click it again it is turned off. And it has a nice little animation that comes with it which is pretty cool as well. Before we finish with this tutorial I just want to go over why you want to use a scaffold widget as one of the outer widgets in your application. So if you see here I've just created a text widget and it just says this is theme text and it has a nice little theme to it that fits fairly well with the Cupertino theme that we've been using. If I come into our My Homepage State class and remove the scaffold widget, you can now see that the text theme has gone a little bit crazy. It's now this red text with two yellow lines below it. And this is because the scaffold widget will automatically theme all ancestor widgets inside of your application. So by removing that scaffold theme, we lose that automatic theming of text widgets and certain other very specific widgets inside of our application. We can kind of fix things though if we want to come in here and specify the style for this text widget. So in here I've put in style, theme of context, text theme, button, and this grabs the theme from the material application definition and then applies it to this text widget for us. But this is the manual way of doing things and if you want it to automatically do this for you, then you definitely want that scaffold widget. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.